Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. It's a reminder that it's not a sprint. I have to take one day at a time, one minute at a time if I have to. And as long as I do that, you know, I can live a good life, make it to the finish line. I'm grateful Christian in recovery, and I stand before you two years of sobriety today. My story started in New Jersey. My parents got divorced when I was young, and I was at a time when divorce wasn't as common as it, as it is now. And with my friends and the close community that we had, you know, I got made fun of a lot. And I just was really curious of why my parents would do that. And that, you know, I was told that they don't love me, they don't care, and that's why they got divorced. So that, you know, put a God-sized hole in my heart. And with those feelings, uh, I started to hang out with an older crowd and uh, drinking to fit in, where the drinking took away my, my uh, pain and, and my suffering and anxiety. You know, growing up in that, uh, hanging out with the older crowd and uh, feeling, feeling the hole in my heart with drugs and alcohol, you know, it, it just stuck on the weekends. And, uh, you know, I maintained decent grades through high school. But uh, eventually I found my way into the restaurant industry where I started to excel. And uh, that's where I learned the uh, fast life and saw money getting exchanged. And that was the lifestyle that I thought uh, I wanted to lead. And that's where I found my acceptance of family because everyone was real close knit. And uh, in the restaurant business, everyone would go out and drink after work. And when I eventually got a day off, I woke up the next morning with my face swollen from here to my shoulder. And my roommate asked me what was wrong. And I said, I don't know. And I just kind of shrugged it off. And then eventually, you know, I just realized that I had health insurance at that time. And I should probably maybe seek some medical attention. So I called an ambulance and they took me to the hospital in the ER. I sat there for about six hours. And eventually an ear, nose, throat specialist came through and said, hey, you're, you know, his kidneys are failing. My whole body was uh, toxic and just swollen up and nothing was getting cleaned. And they rushed me into ICU at that time and, and I was left on dialysis for four, uh, four to five months. You know, miraculously, God healed me and uh, restored my kidneys and they took me off dialysis. And uh, the job that I was working at, you know, held my, held my uh, position. So when I went back, it was the same people, places and things. And it only took me a month to uh, forget the pain that I was going through and to start drinking again. And, uh, you know, quickly my life was spiraling out of control. So I decided to do a geographical change and, and move down to Flor Florida where my brother was living. It didn't take long to pick up where I left off and uh, eventually got a management position and I met my, wa my wife. We eventually had a baby and I thought that that was going to uh, be good enough for me to keep me sober. But when the newness of it wore off and everything, I went back and, uh, you know, I started to stay out later and, you know, a drink and come home later. And one night coming home from work, I got a DUI and, you know, that's when things started going bad at the house. I just started making really bad decisions. I lost my family, my daughter was taken away from me for a little bit, and uh, to just hide the pain and the sorrow that I was dealing with, I just started drinking 24 hours a day, trying to uh, drown myself in booze. And then just one day, I just felt the walls caving in on me in the middle of the afternoon, and of a drunken stupor, and just, you know, I decided it was time that, you know, everyone would be better off without me. So I decided to tie a noose around my neck and hang myself. And as I did that, and um, the selfish part of me, I had my rosary in one hand, my daughter's picture in another, thinking people would feel sorry for me when in reality I was being selfish and only thinking of myself. So I'm hanging there and, you know, that's when I felt the hand of God come touch me for the first time. So I got myself down somehow and I prayed to God to just, you know, I told him I need help, I can't do this anymore and I need help and he put a recovery commercial on TV for me within 10 minutes. So I called my sister-in-law and uh, that's where you know my first experience with Justice Place was. She gave me the number to the intake office and I called and 
when I talked to the intake coordinator and he told me it was a year-long program, I just I thought he was crazy. I never even heard of a year-long program. I got the okay from my family, saying that they would help help me, they would support me. I made the commitment to go into the program, but when I got there, I only was going to do 90 days. I was going to leave. It was there was no way I could sit in a place like that for night for a year. But uh, you know, the longer I was there and talking to my brothers and the you know the interns and the people in charge, the more I realized that uh, I had a lot of work to do to work on myself, and it was going to take longer than 30, 60, or 90 days. That's where my journey started in, in recovery. I started digging into the Word, reading the Bible every day, and building a strong foundation that I never had pretty much my whole entire life to stand on my own two feet. And through that, I did build a solid foundation, and, and uh, once we went out to LaBelle, you know, there's plenty of areas to go running. And I started to run, I could only run a mile, and the more I did it, you know, I would keep running. And it just became a healthy outlet for me to, to uh, deal with whatever I was going on, to pray, to meditate, and just sort through whatever was going on in my life. In typical addict fashion, I just kept needing more. And uh, the challenge was, was good for me. You know, it was a healthy challenge for me to keep better myself. So I eventually started off with a 5K, and I did a couple of 5K runs. And uh, once I started excelling that, I wanted to push myself to a 10K. And I just got accepted to, to run the Chicago Marathon in October. You know, I stayed on as a peer mentor and an intern while I was out in the bell to help the other guys, you know, get to where they need to go. And then I came out to uh, Wolf and interned here for a little bit. And then I went and worked at the thrift store. And then I'm back here at Wolf as a case manager. And uh, today I, I know I have a purpose. Uh, my daughter has been restored back to me. Um, I've just been called to help other guys to get to where they have to go and I, I can't, every day I'm lifting, trying to lift somebody up and help them. You know, through the program I went eight and a half months without talking to my daughter and in God's timing she was brought back into my life and I had the opportunity in my races now that she'll be there and she'll stand a little far back from the finish line and uh, she'll wait for me and she'll finish the race with me. We'll cross the finish line together. And uh, she always says to me when I come up, Daddy, what took you so long? I've been waiting forever. 